Six months ago, I bought this Ford Focus ST to be my new daily driver. And today I'm gonna to tell you why the Focus ST is the best fun daily driver for under $15,000. Alright, so before I even get into this car specifically, I want to kind of tell you the checklist of things that uh, were kind of my requirements for getting a new car. Um, the first one was that I needed to get something in the ten dollars to $15,000 range. Um, that was my budget to get myself into a nice enough car uh, as my daily, something that's reliable. Um, and yeah, that's where my budget was. And that leads me straight into my second uh, point that I needed to uh, check, and that is that I needed a car that was gonna be reliable. A daily driver at the end of the day is something that you need to be able to rely on to get you to work, to get you to school, and not really ever fail on you or fail on that task. The next box that I needed to check was that I wanted a hatchback. Uh, the hatchback body style is something that I've been into for a long time now, uh, both because of rally influence, but also just because I think they uh, are practical. And so I really definitely wanted to get a hatchback. I needed something that was fun. At the end of the day, I'm a huge car guy. So I really didn't want to be rolling around in something like a Honda Accord, even though that would be a great daily for most people. I wanted something that would be a little bit quicker, a little bit more on the fun side of things. Next I needed something that was going to be four doors. Uh, this again goes along with the whole needing a practical car situation. Daily driver, it's got to be able to fit people and stuff, so I needed something that definitely had four doors. Another requirement for me personally is that I wanted to have a car that was a manual. So this eliminated things like a Taurus SHO, for example. I wanted to be able to shift my own gears. I love driving manual, and even as a daily driver, I don't just really see it as uh, a con for me, so I needed to get something that was a manual. I also wanted to get something that was modern. Uh, I wanted to have, you know, a nice cabin, have it be a nice place to spend time. I wanted modern features, um, so that was just another box I needed to check. And finally, I wanted to get something that was faster than a Miata. Uh, if you didn't know, my other car that's been featured on this channel is a 92 Miata. Um, and it's a great car, best project car ever, and it's my pride and joy, but it's not the fastest thing in the world. Um, so I wanted to get something with, you know, the $15,000 budget that would be a little bit quicker in a straight line uh, to kind of provide me with a different form of fun uh, when it came to driving. So, keeping all those checklist items in mind, I ended up landing on this Ford Focus ST. And after owning it for six months, my overall thoughts are that I love it. Uh, it has really done everything I've wanted it to do. Um, it's reliable, it's never had any issues with me. Um, it gets good gas mileage. It's quick enough, for sure. Um, this one is unmodified. It's only got 100,000 miles on it, um, so it doesn't feel like it's aging at all. Um, it's just been an absolutely great car uh, for what I've been needing it to do. So, getting straight into the pros and cons list. Um, after owning this car for six months, I do feel like I have a pretty good grasp on the good and the bad with owning a Focus ST. And I really do have to say, it's mostly good on this car. And I'm gonna start this list off with the touch points. Um, a common thing that people like to complain about with Fords, and especially Fords more economically friendly vehicles, is that they are cheaply built. Um, and you know what? A lot of that is true. Uh, but for the ST specifically, and I don't know about the regular Focus, but the touch points in this car, I'm talking about the steering wheel, the shifter, the pedals, stuff like that, the things you actually uh, work with, with your hands and with your feet, they feel amazing. The steering is precise, it's heavier, so you're not steering it with your pinky, but it goes exactly where you point it. The steering wheel itself is upgraded from the regular Focus to have a sportier grip, 
better thumb hold placements, everything like that. The shifter is smooth. It's a little bit more rubbery and less mechanical than my Miata, but it's very smooth. You're never questioning where the gears are. It feels great. And the pedals don't feel mushy. They don't feel like they're straight out of your everyday Ford Focus. They are, uh, you can be thoughtful with your braking. You can be thoughtful with your throttle input. There's maybe a little bit of latency with the throttle input, probably due to this being a turbocharged car, but nothing to complain about there. The touch points on this car are phenomenal. Another pro that I would like to mention is that it has a really cool boost gauge. Uh, you know, this car is definitely aimed at a younger car enthusiast uh, buyer. I absolutely fall into that crowd. And I gotta tell you, when I'm giving it the beans, I do love to see that boost gauge in the middle there go up when I accelerate and come back down uh, as I get off the throttle. It is really cool. Uh, as tacky as some people may think it looks, I think it's pretty cool. that this car is not modified it makes some pretty good manageable power it's never gonna destroy something like a hellcat or anything but with the six-speed manual with the turbo with the ability to actuate you know what gear you're in and the throttle and everything it is definitely fast enough and it's not too much power to where you're really you know getting yourself into a ton of trouble I already touched on this, but another huge pro is that this car has been dead reliable for me. Uh, I think part of that is absolutely due to the fact that this car is completely stock. Uh, it doesn't have um, a tune on it or anything, no access port. Um, so it's not pushing any extra boost than the factory uh, gave it. And for that reason, it's been really reliable. It's started for me every time I've needed to go somewhere. It's It's been fantastic. Another pro is that the wheels in the body kit that Ford gave the Focus ST are just perfect, in my opinion. They're subtle, but just absolutely amazing. Starting with the wheels, they're a little bit bigger than the regular Focus, and they're absolutely sportier, but they're nothing over the top. I love silver wheels, and so these stock wheels are great for a stock car. And then the body kit that Ford gave this is just immaculate. They've got a more aggressive front bumper, more aggressive rear bumper with the exhaust in the center, which is super cool. Uh, the wing, not too much, not too little. And there is a different side skirt that they gave to this car. Um, also, of course, you get the ST badges, which are very cool as well. Um, and overall, the look of this car, even in stock form, is just great to me. And moving on to the interior, one of the more obvious pros is the seats. This car is an ST2, uh, so it got the Sport Recaro seats, but it did not get the heated seats. Um, however, the ST2 is the only car where you get this um, colored fabric insert within the Recaro seats, and I think the look is really cool. I definitely would have gone for an ST3 with the heated seat option over this, but one like that didn't come up. This car came up ST2, unmodified, 100,000 miles. It came up and I was like, okay, I, I, I'm gonna have to just go for it. So I ended up buying this one. And then finally, gas mileage. Uh, it's a turbocharged four cylinder that is only a two liter as well. So it gets pretty good mileage. I've been averaging around 26 miles per gallon and that's combined city highway, and combined conservative driving and fun driving. So 26 is what you can kind of expect from this car in its stock form. All right, so now let's get into the list of cons. After six months of owning this car, there are a few things that I will be completely transparent about not liking. The first one goes way back to my first pro. And that is that the interior quality, admittedly, is not the greatest outside of the steering wheel, pedals, and shifter. Uh, there's a lot of creaks, there's a lot of cheap plastics. The design is good, but the materials are not great. I mean, you can hear that, it's pretty rough. And going further on that topic, there generally are a few rattles in this car that can be pretty annoying 
when you're driving around. Specifically, there's a rattle right above my head in the headliner that comes and goes, but it's most of the time there. And I kind of just press on it and it goes away for a couple minutes, but then it comes right back. So at the end of the day, this car is of course based on an economy car that wasn't super expensive when it was new and it's over 10 years old now with this car being a 13. So there are some creaks and rattles and some cheap interior quality aspects that you have to deal with in a Focus ST. Another con is that quite frankly, this car is pretty small on the inside. Uh, now that does kind of work as a pro because the car doesn't weigh a whole lot. It handles really well, it drives really well, but it's not the largest space in here. Um, so if you're needing to haul a lot of stuff, uh, you might need to go the wagon or the SUV route instead. It's not the biggest vehicle. I don't know if I'd really call this a con, but I'll tell you about a, an issue I ran into one time. I was on a road trip and I was coming home and I was actually 30 minutes away from home. And my center display was reading that I had 30 miles till empty. I was like, okay, great. I'm gonna get off of the highway in like two or three miles when there's an exit, I'm gonna fill up. I ended up running out of gas when the car was displaying that I had like 25, 26 miles to empty left. Now I realized I could have avoided this problem by just looking at the analog gauge and seeing that, oh, it's on E. But you do kind of expect that the computer is gonna be accurate when telling you how far you can still travel. So that is the thing that happened to me. I ran out of gas. Luckily, I ran out on the exit ramp. So we were able to push the car into the gas station and it wasn't a big deal. But that's just a random weird thing that happened to me. Another con that works as a pro in some cases and a con elsewhere is that we've got a pretty stiff ride in here. Um, it's great in the fact that the car handles really well. Not so great when you're not driving it hard and you've got passengers who are sitting in a tight bucket seat and they're getting rattled around. Now, obviously it's not a race car, it's not too bad. And as the driver, I don't feel like it's too stiff, but in some cases, it's a little stiffer than uh, what some people might expect as a passenger in the car. And then the final two cons kind of go hand in hand. This being a front wheel drive performance car, there is some significant torque steer that happens when you're flooring it going straight. It's not the worst torque steer I've felt in a car before, but it is there. You do have to be mindful of it. When you're really going for it, you have to hold that wheel straight. And then going along with that, there is some pretty significant wheel hop uh, when you are shifting between first and second. As soon as it grabs in second, it's pretty frequent if you're really flooring it uh, that you're gonna get some front wheel wheel hop. Um, now there are some solutions to that, which I'll get into, but it's a thing. It exists, especially in the stock form. Uh, there's some good wheel hop, especially if the road you're driving on isn't perfectly flat. It's gonna happen and it's gonna be a little louder than you want it to be. And it's gonna be a little shocking if you've got passengers in the car. Uh, speaking from experience, uh, it sounds like something is breaking. But it's wheel hop and it exists. So now that we've gone over the pros and cons, let me give you the short list of things that need to be fixed, unfortunately, in this car. None of these things are mechanical problems that are really detrimental to the car working. There's just a couple annoying things that I've been dealing with that um, I plan on addressing probably on this channel. The first one is that the driver's seat bolster is ripped open. Uh, definitely just a wear item, uh, the seam split in two. And so there's a couple things I'm gonna try to uh, fix it, but that's definitely a bit of an eyesore. The second thing is that my rear view mirror uh, has this weird wear on it that I just can't quite explain. Um, and then the third thing, and honestly the most serious thing, is that my sunroof will leak water into the interior. Not when it rains, only in a car wash when there's water blasting through. I, this car is sat outside during proper thunderstorms. It's, it's not a, a weather issue 
it's when water is being jet blasted uh, on the outside of the car. And the reason that it leaks is because my uh, water drain on my eight pillar is clogged up. And so when water gets into the sunroof as it should, uh, it actually has nowhere to go and it overflows into the cabin of the car. It hasn't happened in a long time, but that's because I haven't gone into an automatic wash, even a touchless one in a while. I've just been manually doing it, avoiding the sunroof area in general. All right, so you might be asking, you know, is there anything that I've done to it? And there are a couple things. I mentioned that this car is unmodified and 99% of the way that's completely true. Uh, one of the modifications that I've made is that I replaced my shift knob with a factory focus RS shift knob for two reasons. Uh, the one that came in the car was literally crumbling in my hand. Uh, I don't know why, it was aging real bad and it was starting to literally fall apart. Um, and also the Focus RS shift knob happens to have a blue shift pattern rather than a red one and this car is blue so I thought that that went really nicely with the exterior color. So that's technically not factory but it's not exactly a mod either. Another thing that I've done to this car is that I replaced my air intake filter. Woo! Uh, as you might know, these cars do not make a whole lot of turbo noise. Um, and Cobb just so happens to uh, make a product that lets some of that noise out. Uh, and it's literally just an air filter that is a different shape of the factory. So it's kind of got this opening on the end that uh, is a different design and it allows some of the noise from the turbo to come back out. And I mean, it's honestly more of a maintenance item than a modification, but it did allow some more turbo noise to escape out of the car, which uh, I was all for, so. And then the last thing I've done to this is that I've had to do one oil change so far in six months. Um, I've been doing them every four or 5,000 miles. I'm coming up on needing one in about 700 miles again but I've done an oil change, went super smooth, uh, and uh, it was super easy. So parts of this car, and actually I've heard most of it, it's pretty easy to work on. So that's a plus as well. And so going forward, I kind of just wanted to open up to you guys or anyone who's interested, uh, what should I do to this car? Um, I've got a couple ideas, such as a rear motor mount to fix some of that wheel hop. I heard that that can do wonders. I've also heard that a rear sway bar uh, can really help with handling, which is pretty cool. I generally want to keep this car pretty close to stock, at least for a while, because it is my daily driver. Um, and I generally am a huge fan of pretty clean builds, so I'm very particular in what I pick out. But uh, let me know if you guys have any ideas for uh, some modifications or projects that I can or should do to this car. Uh, that would enhance the driving experience. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think of the Focus ST. Um, so just give me all your thoughts in the comments. I just wanna hear what you think. So uh, yeah, this was my six month ownership review of my 2013 Ford Focus ST. Thanks for watching.